Hi everyone, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes. Today we're going to be looking at this grey plus two Spectrum 128K that I picked up for a bargain on eBay. I actually prefer these to the black plus two A because they don't take the big chunky power supply brick. You can still use a simple barrel connector because all the power circuitry is still on the main board. As you can see, we've got a pretty hefty failure mode here and I'm suspecting the CPU or maybe the ROM and the reason for that is that the border isn't white. When the Z80 first wakes up, the first thing it does is it asks the ROM what should it do first, or in other words, it asks the ROM which instruction do you have in address 0000. It always starts from zero. The Z80 is still doing its other jobs in the background, such as refreshing the dynamic memory. Anyway, the ROM replies, disable the interrupts, that's the first thing in the Spectrum ROM. And the Z80 does that and says, OK, that's great, so what have you got stored in address 1? To which the ROM says, do more stuff. And the Z80 goes on and on, asking what should it do next, until the ROM tells it to turn the border white. This all happens very quickly after powering up the Speccy. So if the border isn't going white, then the Z80 is either failing to ask the ROM what it should do, failing to interpret the instructions returned from the ROM, or the ROM is failing to understand the request from the Z80, or spitting out garbage. This can happen because of faulty chips, or it can also happen if any of these address lines aren't working correctly. Maybe one is shorted to ground, maybe one's shorted high, maybe one's being held high or low by another chip. Before removing any chips, I decided to scope each of these address lines individually, and I did find that a few of them were being held low. When I removed the ROM chip, all of the address lines seemed to come back to life, which made me pretty confident that the ROM was the cause of this issue. Luckily I had a spare chip, so I popped it in, and... still the same issue. Even worse, the diagnostic card doesn't work when the address lines are being held low. This is all I got when I tried to run a diagnostic ROM, so that's not very helpful. But I did remember that with the ROM chip removed, all the address lines came back to life, so I pulled it out, and there we go. I managed to run a diagnostic. And it's actually just about readable. It's telling me that two of the memory chips are bad. And I can just read that it's 12 and 13. And I do have a few spare RAM chips, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to piggyback them over the bad chips, or over the suspect chips. Now I guess it does depend on the exact way in which the chips have failed, but this really can work and I think it's something to do with magic, or maybe even science. As you can see by what happened when I ran the diagnostic ROM again, it's almost working perfectly. In fact, now that those vertical lines have disappeared, it really is working perfectly. You wouldn't know that there were piggyback chips in there. And I thought I'd really push it and try loading a game, and yeah, I was able to play Star Glider on the machine with the two RAM chips piggybacked. But I couldn't exactly leave the chips like that, so let's get these two bad chips out and pop in those new ones properly. And now we have a working 128k Speccy. You might notice that I've got a modern voltage regulator in there. This Speccy had a few more issues when I picked it up. There were transistors missing and the voltage regulator had died. So I fixed those up, I didn't record that, I didn't think it was very interesting. But then I got this memory fault, so hence the video. I thought I was in the clear after replacing those chips, but this reset switch doesn't work. As you can see when I press it, the machine doesn't reset. But if I short the two pins that the switch should be shorting, it does reset. Like that. Well, we're engineers, so we're going to have to take it apart and see how it works. It's a bit tricky to get this out. There are five pins to remove, two of which are on the case of the switch, so they're quite thick. But it came out in the end, and I could see the switch mechanism is quite simple. It's just these three contacts, 
and this collar that kind of sits on top and bridges two of them and gets pushed backwards and forwards. Contacts were really corroded, so I tried to clean it up. I did a fairly good job and then broke it. Never mind, I've got a spare. Let's clean the board while the thing's removed. As you can see, this board was in quite a state. Luckily, I've got a whole load of surgical spirit and it did a really good job of cleaning all this gunk off. Quite satisfying, actually. And there we have it, a fully working 128k Specky board. Thank you for watching, and I challenge any of you to have a worse game of Saboteur 2 than I'm about to have here.